It is December 20th, 2022, and normally I don't really point out the date because people watch our videos uh, for months and months and months after and will eventually become years and years after, um, considering we've been here on YouTube for two years. My hair's finally growing back and I'm digging it. Um, make sure you like this video as you join. I'm not digging the reflection in my glasses. You see our lighting back there. <laughs> so, can I stand this way? No. <laughs> Turn the light down so it's not facing you directly. It's fine. Away. It's just distracting to me, probably more than anyone. I like people, you know, you want to look people in the eyes, but um. What do you need your glasses for right now? Uh, reading. Oh, okay. <laughs> General seeing. <laughs> um, how's it going? As you guys are hopping on, say hello. I definitely love to see your comments, whether you're live or watching the replay. And I always try to come back and respond, especially if you have questions. Um, so today we're doing a little bit of a holiday feature, if you couldn't tell. We're going to talk a little bit about what it's like uh, to live in the Northwest, in the Portland metro area during the holidays. Obviously, we can get our fair share of buffalo plaid on, uh, which... Buffalo plaid is acceptable year round. And I have a question for you. Yes. Does buffalo plaid, this is like the, the, the blonde in me, does buffalo plaid come from Buffalo, New York? Like, why is it called buffalo plaid? I've never done a deep dive <laughs> Inside my brain. Yeah, so we're going to update you on some of the happenings and uh, talk about some of the events that happen for the holiday season here in the Portland Metro and Greater Vancouver area. But before we do that, I will introduce myself. I'm Hal Bird. Uh, you're watching my YouTube channel, Living in the Pacific Northwest with Hal Bird. I am a licensed realtor and broker in both Oregon and Washington and a relocation specialist. A cert I always forget that. A certified relocation specialist, um, which Probably, I don't know, maybe that means something to people, but. You have a certificate? <laughs> I do. I'm a certified relocation specialist. Where's your certificate at? I'll put it up on the uh, bookshelf. Um, it's somewhere around here. Okay. I'll have to. <laughs> Organization uh, is definitely your strong suit more so than mine. Um, okay, so let's catch you up on some of the happenings around town. Um, Highway 14. Oh, I guess I should also say if you're looking to move to or move within anywhere in the Portland Metro and Southwest Washington areas, make sure to shoot me a text whether you're looking to buy, sell, or invest. My phone number is 360-818-4438. You can also email me at hal at homewithhal.com. Uh, you can browse homes on my website, halbird.com, and there is a Zoom link down in the description if you want to schedule a Zoom with me to discuss your real estate needs or plans or goals or et cetera, et cetera. If you want to get into real estate, you got anything for me? If you want to get into real estate or you want to work together, if you're already licensed uh, anywhere in the country and several places internationally, I can work with other agents to help them grow their businesses and be at the best brokerage in town. <laughs> uh, so one of the things that we want to talk about, there was an article that came out about 12 hours ago in the Columbian and they were talking about how Highway 14 reopened after it was, there were 40 miles of road closures on Highway 14. And if you're wondering where that is, uh, we live in Vancouver, Washington, and Highway 14 is the southernmost east to west highway that goes through Vancouver. It actually starts at I-5 uh, on the west side of Vancouver uh, near downtown, and it runs through all through the lower part of Washington. I'm trying to think about, I think it turns and goes north around Tri-Cities. I don't know. I haven't taken it to its termination. <laughs> I never really thought about it. Um, so, and all of those closures happened east of Washougal. So if you know a little bit about our story, if you've watched our video, our journey to Vancouver, Washington, you might know that we looked all over Washington state. And we also have a video about why Southwest Washington is the best uh, area to move to in Washington state. Um, but we thought about, highly thought about living in the White Salmon area, in the Gorge, Stevenson. That's, uh... And that's once you once you leave Clark County, you go to Skamania County, correct? Yes, and then when you get to White Salmon, it goes to Klickitat County. Klickitat County. 
Uh, so, totally different counties. Although I do really enjoy Clark County uh, for just general living enjoyment. Um, so, one of the, the reason why I'm bringing up this story is because I wanted to highlight how where you decide to move can have a big impact on your holiday season and on the weather that you might experience. And the biggest factors are gonna be the more east you go from Vancouver, the more snow you're gonna get, mostly because after you have Vancouver, you have Camas and then Washougal. And after Washougal, that's where the Columbia, the national, wait, no. what is the right way, way to say that? The Columbia River Gorge National Scenic Area, I think the full name of it, um, but most people just call it the gorge locally. Uh, it's, it's a mountain range. It's the Cascade Mountain Range. And so you, you have an instant increase in elevation. And even if you live on Prune Hill, like my clients on Prune Hill, the other day when it snowed, and if you remember me telling you guys, it didn't really stick. My clients uh, that live on Prune Hill, they were like, oh, actually, it stuck for us. Like there were, we got a few inches. So even a little bit of change in elevation can really affect your snow conditions. On the flip side, Seattle last yesterday you said deer overnight. Uh, last last night. Went to this morning. Uh, they got five inches of snow. Now it is supposed to snow Thursday, uh, which is in two days. But over the weekend it was supposed to snow Monday and it didn't. So I'm always a little skeptical when there's snow in the forecast because it seems like it just gets pushed back and then sometimes it just disappears. But if you live in those higher elevations or if you go more north or more east, you're gonna have more snow. So if you want more snow, then I would consider that. And when I say more east, I'm talking about the outskirts and the more rural areas of Camas and Washougal, because that's where the gorge is starting. You start to get very mountainous and the elevation increases quite quickly compared to if you are, let's say in downtown Vancouver or near the waterfront. So that was kind of interesting to see. Um, another thing to spotlight, so for some people, um, especially maybe growing up in Southern California, um, had a lot of friends of various Latin descents. And so I also saw this article about Clark, Clark County's hot tamale spots. So if you are looking for tamales, you can get some at um, three different places they mentioned. One is Mercado, I can't even, <laughs> I sound like such a gringa, <laughs> Mercado Latino, which is on Fourth Plain. Um, Fourth Plain is like our multicultural corridor, so there's a lot of different um, cultural like diversity in the businesses there, um, and the city is trying to, from what I can tell, invest into it and make sure that those businesses and that area uh, prospers and really becomes a featured gem of the Vancouver area. Uh, Dulce Tenacion. Is also on fourth plane. <laughs> Why did I volunteer this <laughs> to expose myself as <laughs> having no Spanish skills whatsoever? I took French in high school, so does that give me a little bit of a pass? Only if you're doing the French right. French uh, expose. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then the other place they mention is uh, Chalitas Tamales. So you can get your tamales around here. Although I have a friend who is supposed to be making me some tamales, so I'm. I should probably hit her up. I offered to help though. You can't just ask people for tamales. You gotta help. Yeah, this is a labor of love, man. It is some serious labor. Um, so one of the other things we did recently for the holiday season is uh, the Christmas ships is a long-standing tradition. It's been going on since 1954. And our favorite winery, Mary Hill Winery, uh, had an event and we got to invite some clients to it. It was very difficult to get tickets. Um, but we got to invite some clients and some friends out and that was a really good time, but you don't have to, uh, reserve a table. The Christmas ships happen along the Willamette and Columbia river every year. They have a schedule. There are two days left this season. One is tonight at 7 PM at the Vancouver waterfront slash Hayden Bay. And then the other one is tomorrow also at 7 PM at, it says North Portland Harbor, but you can go to christmasships.org to see their schedule. So if you haven't heard of the Christmas ships and if you're in town or if you live here, um, there's tonight and tomorrow, as in today's Tuesday the 20th, tomorrow, Wednesday the 21st, which is the shortest day of the year, 
um, are the last days to go out, but it's super fun. It's great to bring kids. Make sure you dress really warm. Uh, when we were out there last week, uh, Life with Jen says, hey, how packing and listening. You did great with the pronunciation of those restaurants. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> that gives me some credit. <laughs> I think you're being a little too nice, but that's okay. <laughs> um, by the way, I have a quote to send you. Um, from the electrician. I was, Jen and her family are moving up here to Vancouver and we are in escrow on their property. Um, so when I get off here, actually last week that I was live, I got off to go to their inspection. And then now when I get off of live, <laughs> um, I'll be going to meet some contractors to do additional inspections on their property. Um, so the Christmas ships, super fun uh, annual tradition when we were out on the waterfront running last Thursday, we saw people with like heaters and stuff like that. So it's definitely cold, especially Thursday. The high is supposed to be 19 degrees. The high? The high is supposed to be 19 degrees. On Thursday? Yeah. And if you're wondering, that's not normal. <laughs> like it was 40, it was in the low 40s yesterday. So, I mean, you definitely need a coat, but it's, it's, I don't know. We have a couple days like that a year, it seems like, especially as the weather becomes more extreme. Although my inspector who grew up here, uh, John, mm -hmm. he said uh, that when he was growing up, they used to get into the negatives up in Longview. Is that because of the elevation or? I don't know, but he just said it doesn't get cold here like it used to, which I mean, is great for me, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it probably doesn't get colder snow like it used to, the like problem, most places. The problem is though, the colder weather promotes snow, uh, snowpack, Mm -hmm. which later melts and feeds our rivers and forests. That and, is true. You know, so, yeah. Oh, I guess there's like a good and bad side to everything, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to talk about some of those holiday events. So obviously the big one is the Christmas ships. It's like very well-known tradition. It's super cute and fun to just stand out there. There are different holiday light displays around Portland um, because we live in Vancouver. One of the biggest featured ones is on Franklin Street. They are great for uh, Halloween and Christmas. Uh, they have, if you had to guess, dear, the Franklin Street, how many trick-or-treaters do you think they host every year? 50,000. Oh, don't be ridiculous. The whole town is like, what, less than 200,000? I was assuming people would come from outside the town, though. <laughs> I guess. 10,000. I was hoping you were going to say a small number, like 1,000. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Where's 10, Franklin, Franklin Street, Vancouver, or, or Portland? Uh, Vancouver, downtown. Oh, gotcha. Um, but they also do holiday lights, and they put up 150,000 Christmas lights mm -hmm. uh, for their Christmas display. So that's super fun. There's classic films going on. There's tree lightings in downtown Vancouver, although they didn't have a live event this year. Also in Ridgefield. Um, there's tons of things to do, like the Santa train. This is a big event in Portland, though, that someone was just telling us about at, uh, at dinner last week. I went to Portland. I don't recall. Okay, sorry. Um, then we have a ton of New Year's celebrations coming up. There's also, uh, if you go to Jewish Vancouver, junior, talk, Jewish Vancouver, W-A, like WA, dot com, they have a Clark County Community uh, Hanukkah celebration, and that's for Clark County. And then in Portland, they have a Kwanzaa celebration, um, so that's something that's cool to do. So there's whatever uh, holidays you do like to celebrate, there's definitely something for you to do here in the area. Uh, but are there any holiday traditions that you guys have either just with your family or that you like doing where you currently live or anything that I missed. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments. And um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Kind of just us gearing up for Can the holidays. Can you talk about that uh, running we had last week while we were running? I did last week. Oh, did you? That was last yeah. Thursday? That was, that was Thursday. So when did you go live? I went live Friday. Oh, gotcha. I think you were busy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, did you want to talk about it again? Since you didn't get to say anything about it, do you want to come and say hi? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think that pretty much covers it. I won't draw the, the video out other than to say that it's festive, 
you know, you get a little bit of snow sometimes. It's pretty early if we get snow in December. We normally get more snow in, I would say, like mid-January to like early February. Um, but it doesn't stick. So one of the things I always tell people is it's really cute. It's like we get enough snow that it's cute and fun and festive, but not enough that it's an inconvenience. Um, I have quite a few clients that are in the medical field and one of their considerations when we're looking, and this is, this is really why you have to work with someone who knows and understands you because if you're a nurse and you can't or don't want to, realistically you can't call off because of weather, you know, people are still going to get sick. You do not want to have a driveway that faces north and is also steep because depending on your car, and even if you have a great car, it's not going to be easy to um, get out of your garage when you need to go to work. So um, my client who's a nurse who is closing next week, one of the things that I personally like about their house, it's just like a little detail, like their house checks all of their boxes, but their driveway faces east, so it gets the morning sun, and it's also flat. So she'll never have a hard time going to work unless I mean unless we get really dumped on with snow but um which is the which is the downside a lot of people call you up wanting you know a little bit of land an acre half acre stuff like that so typically houses that are off of the street the further off the street a lot of times they're up off the street mm -hmm. so if you do you know just let people know if they do want that like the idea of a, of a, a larger lot sometimes that comes along with it yeah I just think like I'm thinking about be... like our, our, uh, our clients up in um, Kelso? Oh, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, driveway. just think about that kind of driveway. I think I'd rather be up on the hill and let my car slide down. Oh, really? <laughs> than to be at the bottom of the hill and try to make my way up. You can just park and walk. You know that, right? What do you mean? You can park your car at the bottom of the hill and walk up versus sliding into a tree or something. <laughs> you mean if you know it's going to snow in advance? Yeah, or you just do what you used to do in these and pre-salt your, pre your driveway so the snow makes it That's much harder sick. to stick. Yeah. And then you don't have to shovel. Yeah, well, Did you know that most people in Vancouver don't own a shovel? That's how yeah, little yeah. snow that we get. Like See, that, no, that should be like a winter fact series. Like the thing, household items and maybe car items that you would need living yeah. here. You don't need a four wheel drive. It's nice to have, but you don't need one. Plenty of people have two wheel drive cars. Trust me. It's and, a big luxury though, especially if you want to go up to to the mountains or Leavenworth yeah. and not be dependent. You know. Yeah, that's kind of funny to think about. Jared always talks about that because he's like, I thought the people in the Northwest were so hardy and I get up here and, you know, we'll see on Facebook when it snows, people are like, is it safe to leave the house yet? <laughs> <laughs> are the roads plowed yet? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, I don't know. It's it's definitely not part of our normal everyday life snow. So it's it's novel, it's fun, and it's, it's exciting. Business is closed down. Uh, this one last year wanted to go to Dairy Queen when it was snowing. All the Dairy Queens in town are closed. What better time to go get some ice? What better time to get a blizzard than in a, a blizzard? You see what I mean? <laughs> That's true. Kevin says, or invest in a snowblower. Oh, I had a nice or one. Or have a nice, you know, third level uh, waterfront condo that you can watch all the snow. And you got nothing to blow or shovel or salt. No blowing, no shoveling. And be retired so that you can stay home and you don't have to go to work. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that the dream? I have a lot of clients who move up here uh, to retire and then either follow their kids or bring their kids with them. Uh, in this case, my clients that are closing next week, their parents are going to follow them. Oh, really? Yeah. I talked to his uh, mom last night. What's wrong with my janky parents? How come they don't want to come here? <laughs> well, my janky parents don't want to come here either. <laughs> I take that back. I feel like both of our moms would want to come here, but do they act? Well, they actually is. Yeah. No. No. So it's just us guys, just the two of us. Okay. Um, I think that's going to be all. I will catch you guys next time. I hope you have a lovely Christmas and whatever else you celebrate. Kevin says, Ooh, I want that. <laughs> um, whatever holidays you celebrate, hope you have a lovely new year. Um, this is not the last video of the year from Living in the Pacific Northwest with Hal Bird, but just wanted to wish you all a lovely holiday season. Uh, this will be the last live we do before Christmas. Really? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Fridays. <laughs> <laughs>
before Christmas, doesn't it? Yes, but we're gonna put out, we're putting out a produced video on Friday. Gotcha. Good. Coming out on Friday is six reasons. Is it gonna be six? It's gonna be reasons that you wouldn't want to move to Vancouver, Washington, 2023 edition. So that'll be fun. We'll see how that goes. So anyway, I will catch you guys next time. Ciao.